the morning star. Good morning. Thank God for our deacons for leading us in praise and worship. If you are able, please stand to your feet as we continue in our worship service. God is a good God. God is a great God. God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. God is so gracious and so merciful. On behalf of our pastor and the First Baptist Church, we are so delighted that you've chosen this day to come into God's house and lift up the name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we love you, and it is an honor to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Good morning. We'll be led in prayer in our morning worship by myself, Reverend H. Champel Brown, and we'll have our scripture reading by Reverend Gayla Sheets. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Oh, Lord, we bless your name. Oh, God, we come today to lift our voices to give you praises and honor, oh, God. God, we thank you for looking beyond our faults. And God, we thank you for seeing each and every one of our needs. God, you are holy, you are sovereign. God, we salute this service to you by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Because God, we know there is power, there is wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. So God, we thank you for another opportunity of worship, oh God. Speak, oh Lord, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, spirit. God, pour out a fresh anointing amongst our pastor, oh God. We thank you for the gifts that you have bestowed upon him. God, we ask that you have thine own way on this day as we lift up our hands, as we open our mouths of praises, oh God, as we shout hallelujah, because God, you have brought us a mighty long way. And God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power. And we thank you for bringing us a mighty long way so we can say, look, Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and just one familiar verse. Verse 11. And in the King James Version, you'll find these words. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Sheets, for our scripture reading this morning. Take a moment to wave to each other and thank God that we're able to be in the house of God to lift up the name of Jesus. Today is a good day, and God is so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you like. We will have a musical selection from our ministry of music at this time.
Share with me, sir. sir. We, would? we would see Jesus. See Jesus. Come on, is there, is there any, word any word from the Lord? From the Lord. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him there's a word. There is, there is a word. Come on, y'all. Sing.
Thank you so much. What a blessing. How many of y'all in here blessed and know you're blessed? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Let's look at Psalm number 90. Psalm number 90, first of all. Psalm number 90. And uh, we invite your attention to verses. Uh, let's look at 10 through 12. Verses 10, 11, and 12. My God. The 90th division of Psalm. Mm. And uh, we're going to be reading from the King James Version of the Scriptures. It says, The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. It says, Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear? So is, so is thy wrath. Verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And then let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. And we call that the love chapter. I thought y'all sure y'all get excited about love. <laughs> you ought to go ahead and look at your neighbor right now and tell him I need this message today. <laughs> I need it. I need this one today. Amen. We, we can't even shout on love. No, we got a problem. Amen. And just want to look at one verse, number 11. This is the Apostle Paul speaking on the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I became an adult, when I matured in life, I put away childish things. And I want to ask you today, have you lived long enough to know how to live? Have you lived long enough to know how to live? I want to suggest to you that, that even though we are living, some of us don't know how to live. And, and I've got to confess to you that, that every now and then I get a little envious. Say it, say it. I get a little jealous when I see other folk. Jesus. And it looks like, it just seems like My Lord. they are getting the most out of life mm -hmm. that there is available. My God. I mean, there are just some folk that really know how to live. Yeah. They know how to enjoy life. Yeah. They know how to put things in this proper perspective. They know when to work. And they know when to play. They know when to be serious. And they know when to just let it all hang out. I mean, some folk just know how to live. And, uh, and again, sometimes it, it kind of bothers me. When I, I, I don't feel like I'm at the same level as they are. I, I don't like it when y'all having more fun than I am. Mercy. I, I don't like it. I mean, you know, I, I, I just don't like it because it seems like you're getting something that I'm not getting. So I, I've studied on that thing. And I, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. And I'm trying my best to learn how to live. Just a few weeks ago, I think I shared with you that, that my sister and her husband went up to the Kentucky Derby. And when I saw that, I'm like, these guys really, they really know how to live. Then just a couple of weeks later, my other sister 
and her husband. I just called a check on her and, and come to find out they were in Brown's hometown. Las Vegas. You know, and I'm thinking, these girls really know how to live. They have a song, as a matter of fact, that says, Joe knows how to live. And it's more than just having fun. It's more than just having a good time. What it really means is that, that we need to know how to get all that God has to offer us out of life. But that, that's why I'm glad the word of God tells. That's what Paul was talking about. He says, now, now when I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I acted like a child. But, but, but when I became a man, that in your life as you grow older, let, let me help you out. You ought to do more than just grow older. Paul says in life, as we grow and as we mature, as we get older, something ought to be happening in our lives. Something ought to be going on and, 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 and we ought to be making some kind of transition. As a matter of fact, we ought to really look to that song that says every round goes higher and higher. And, and whenever God wakes us up in the morning, whenever God gives us another day, whenever God blesses us to see life again, then we really ought to know how to live. Because when you don't know how to live, you're wasting, listen, you're wasting some good life. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, when we talk about how we waste things, and therefore they don't care if you waste something that ain't no good. They, they don't care if, if the cake got burned and, and you wasted that. Nobody cares about that. But nobody wants you to waste the good stuff. Amen. 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 Nobody, nobody wants you to waste the good stuff. As a matter of fact, they'll jump all over you. What do you mean wasting that? How many of y'all know life is the good stuff? <laughs> Amen. Your health and your strength is the good stuff. With God providing a supply I ever need, that's the good stuff. And we got to learn how to live. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul is saying that as we grow and as God allows us, we are to mature in life. And, and there ought to be a transition taking place where I think differently. My, God. My attitude gets a little better. Yeah. My behavior gets a little better. Yeah. I don't do the things that I used to, not because I can't, but because I have no desire to do those things. Yeah. I wish I had somebody here today. Yeah. Yeah. That as we grow older, we ought to become wiser, we ought to yeah. be smarter, we ought to be stronger. And the same thing that trapped you at 18 ain't got no business trapping you at 80. Ain't no point, I'm 72 years old, so I got to bump it up a little bit. Ain't no point of a 75 year old person talking about, well, I just couldn't help it. You don't live that long, you ought to let you to learn how to help it by now. I just lost control. No, you lost your mind. Because as God allows us to grow, listen, we ought to become smarter and wiser, and we ought to learn how to use our time wisely. Not only our time, but our, our resources. And I believe that that's what God means when he tells us in his word, when he talks about, listen, when he talks about the brevity of life and talks about the challenges of life. Here's how he puts it. He says that, that, that life is a laborious task. I wish I had some help in here because, listen, that's why every chance you get, you ought to enjoy yourself. You ought to have a good time. You ought to laugh every opportunity that you have because life is a laborious proposition. Thank you, Lord. Come on now. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about because some of y'all had to work hard even to get out of bed this morning. I said y'all have to work hard to get along with your neighbor. You got to work hard at doing the task, everyday task of life. Life is a laborious experience. 
That's why you got to learn how to make it fun. Learn how to make it work for you. I, I want you to know that I'm not just working on life. I'm making life work for me. Yeah. Yes, I am. He, he says that, 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 that not only is it laborious, but then that there's a such thing as the brevity of life. Life doesn't last always. Amen, amen, no. amen. The last always, and even when the Bible says that, 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 that when you look at the three score and ten, and, and maybe if you did all right, might, might make it to 80, but let me help you out here today, that nothing is guaranteed for us. God, God just gives us some, some of, a, of a norm when it comes to life, when it comes to what he has provided for us, but, but, but life oftentimes depends on how we live, but there are times that life will close out on you even though you're living right. He so he says that there's the brevity of life and, and, and many of us have not yet learned how to live. Why, why is it that, that we will not, not really living? My God. Why is it that we have not yet learned how to live? And, and I, I believe that if we follow what Paul is saying and, and, and understand that maybe somewhere along the line we didn't really grow up. I mean, it got taller. But our minds didn't grow. We got taller. Jesus, Jesus. I ain't going to mess with y'all, but we got wider. Jesus. Amen. But attitude didn't change. Our behavior didn't change. Our thought process did not change. And what we have are some old children. Not y'all, but your cousin them. So we don't know how to live. And, and, and one of the reasons, let me give you a couple of things. One of the reasons that we don't know how to live is because we are depending on what other people think about us in order to determine when, where, and how we live. I know you don't want to fess up this morning, but let me tell you, there are too many of us who are trying to live according to what somebody else expects of us and according to what they have designed for us. The devil is a liar. I am not trying to live down to your expectation, and I am not waiting on you to figure out how to live. Some of us don't even believe we can live if nobody else tells us. And we are sitting around and wasting our lives, waiting on somebody else to approve us, waiting on somebody else to certify us, to validate us. No, I ain't waiting on y'all. Anybody here already know who you are? Anybody here already know who you are? Know that you are blessed and highly favored. Know that God has made you and you are beautifully and wonderfully made. Yes. Amen. Let me tell you, some of us, we don't know how to live because, because we are dissatisfied with who we are. My God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're dissatisfied with who we are. Oh my God. I, I, I mean, I'm sure it's been around forever, but, but I've never seen so many dissatisfied people who are dissatisfied with themselves. Jesus. I mean, we struggle. We got people that, you know, very low self-esteem and don't think much of themselves and don't love themselves and therefore they can't love anybody else. Don't, don't really care much about themselves. As a matter of fact, you got some folk that care more about you and think more highly of you than they think of themselves. And it, it's no secret. I mean, it's no secret. People are uh, daily revealing themselves and revealing their dissatisfaction with themselves. They are really exposing themselves and telling the world, I don't like who I am. I don't like what I am. Because let me tell you something. There is a difference in working on who you are and then trying to become somebody else. I mean, we go to an extreme trying to change who we are. And listen, you don't have to change who you are. I'm all there with you. Improve on who you are. Work on who you are. But there's a difference in trying to become somebody else because you're dissatisfied with who you are. And we go to such extremes now that it really borders on the brink of the bazaar, the things that we'll do because we're not satisfied with ourselves. Hello. Hello. 
don't get scared. I ain't going there. I'm not going to dig into that sore wound right there. No. But there are too many of us. We do just about anything. We, we, we want to change our look. We want to change this. Listen, can I go ahead and tell you in case nobody else told you, you look good just like you are. I mean, you, you don't need much. You're not really that high maintenance. I mean, really, all you got to do is take a bath. All you got to wash your face, fix your hair. You good to go. You ain't got to swap nothing out. You ain't got to change nothing out. Just clean up what you got. Right. And we're out there trying to get a hold of this and that to change our identity. And change. I love who I am. I still keep my hair cut. I still shave. I still clean my clothes. I still clean my body. But I love who I am. And I don't care what y'all might think about me, but I, I love who I am. I thank God for who I am. And I'm not trying to become somebody else just to satisfy y'all. Hey, hey, hey. yes. Thank you, Lord. I don't care who it is. I admire people who do good things and do well. I admire and I can celebrate you. But listen, I ain't trying to become you. <laughs> I'm trying to get through here without messing with some of y'all. That's why, that's why, listen, you ought to be the trend setter. Instead of the trend follower. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, we we're too dissatisfied with ourselves. And we got we have too many people, too many young folk, even older people who are crying out in various ways. Look at me. Notice me. Pay attention to me. Look at me. I'm over here. Because they're dissatisfied with who they are. And they don't believe that you like them. My Lord. And they are constantly trying to change themselves to appeal to you. My, 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 my Lord. They ain't doing it because that's the way they want to look at you. Because that's the way they think you want. Amen. Amen. People just, just satisfied with yourself. We are unhappy with our situation. <laughs> that's why we can't live. We are unhappy with our situation. Listen, if your situation doesn't suit you, change it. Yeah. 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 Every day you get up, you ought to be happy. Yeah. You ought to thank God you got a job to go to. You ought to thank God you got a family. You ought to thank God you have friends. Yeah. That's how you got to learn how to live. Yeah. You got to learn how to live. And uh, uh, let me just give you a couple of clues real quick. And then we're going to get out of here. A uh, couple of things will, will sort of alert you that, that you're on the right track there. Okay. I'm getting it now. I'm learning how to live. There, there, there are a few things that, that will alert you that, that finally you are, you are learning how to live. Well, what, are they, what are they, preacher? Because I need to know how to live. I, I really need to know how to live. I'm, I'm tired of just existing. I'm tired of just taking up space on earth. I'm, I'm tired of just going through the motion. I'm tired, I'm tired of waking up every day and listen and cussing every day that I wake up. When I learn how to live, listen, when I learn how to live by my choices, by the choices that I make, uh, 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 and when I'm learning how to live by the choices that I make, listen, my good days outweigh my bad yay, days. Yay, yay. Yeah, yay. I'm, I'm talking about when you get on the right track, and now you're making some good choices, making some good decisions, and, and not decisions that will set you back, not decisions that will harm you. When you're learning how to live by the choices that you make. Your good days outweigh your bad days. <laughs> Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm talking about now. Now, now you're waking up. Now you're getting up. Now you're living life. And now you're beginning to enjoy life more. Because you learn how to make some better choices. I'm, I'm so glad that, that God has blessed us to, to make some better choices. Because, listen, uh, uh, uh. Stupid will live with you for the rest of your life if you let it. Do I have a witness here today? I'm talking about stupid 
We'll, we'll, we'll hang out with you all day, stupid. We'll go to bed. No, I ain't talking about them. Stupid, listen. We'll wake up in the morning with you. I mean, stupid just hangs around waiting on somebody to take it up. Milo. Milo. But when you begin to learn how to live, I told you a long time ago, I thank God. God, and I, I pray it even now, deliver me from stupid. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of wasting life. <laughs> I said, I'm tired of wasting the precious life that God gives us. And, and when we learn how to live, watch what happens. When we learn how to live, then we learn how to celebrate more than we do complain and more than we do criticize. Has the scales began to tilt yet? Has, has the scales began to tilt yet? And, and now you find yourself, I'm not complaining as much as I used to. I'm not criticizing as much as I used to, but I've learned how to every day to get up and celebrate. Uh, uh, you ain't feeling me yet? When I, when I get up in the morning, when you get up every morning, you ought to celebrate God. I thank you that I got up. God, I thank you that I have a family. God, I thank you that I have a job to go to. You ought to get up and celebrate it. And when you know how to celebrate that, that's why, that's why some of y'all don't know when to shout, how to shout, don't know how to have church, because you ain't yet learned how to live. My God. When you learn how to live, the criticism will decrease. Uh-huh. The complaining. Will decrease. Yes. Has anyone noticed about you that you don't complain as much as you used to? Has anyone noticed about you that your demeanor has changed and you seem happier now? Has anybody told you lately that 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 you've noticed that they've gone from bloodshot eyes to a glow and a gleam in the eye? Anybody told you lately? My God. That you're looking better. Yes. That that looks like everything is all right. I don't hear you complaining like you used to. I don't hear you criticizing like you used to. And, and, and now it seems like you learned how to celebrate life. Yes. Seems like you learned how to live life. Yes. You know, yes. I, I, I'm not, I'm I'm not. I am not going to waste my life on, criticizing. Amen. What if what if right now was your last breath and and and, and you was you were in the midst of fussing and cussing? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, when you learn how to live, you learn. No, I ain't, I ain't going out there. Listen, let me give you another. When you learn how to live, then you begin to know, listen, and understand the value and the brevity of life. Anybody here know that life is too precious? It's too precious to waste your time. It's too precious to be mad at somebody. Life is too short and life is too precious to go through life mad all the time, upset all the time, dissatisfied all the time. Life is too precious for that. And that's why you got to learn how to live. I don't care how, how dark your days look. Don't wait on nobody else to brighten up your day. Brighten up your own day. Look at your neighbor and say, turn on your own light. Now that's the good thing about it. All of us got our own thermometer, and and uh, and, and see up up here with our thermometer. We, uh, certain folks, we don't want you messing with our thermometer. Amen. All I can to keep major away from it is that up here we set the temperature, but out there y'all set your own temperature. Amen, somebody. That's what I try to tell preachers sometimes. We're sitting around waiting on the crowd to get us fired up. I don't know whether you notice it or not, but when I walked in, I had my fire. When I walked in, I had my heat turned up. When I walked in, I was already happy. I wasn't waiting on y'all to make me happy. When I walked in, I already had a store of amens already in me. Thank you, Jesus. Because I, I, yes. I understand now Thank the value oh, yeah. of life yes. and the brevity oh, yeah. of life. Uh -huh. yes. I hope you know this already, that, that, that really the truth is you don't have to be living today. Mm. Say it. Say it. Say it. 
You got a signed document that says you had to live today? My Lord, my Lord. You got somewhere somebody declared to you got to live today? Life, listen, life is valuable. Life is valuable. And we have to learn how to live. And, and what, what, that, what that encompasses is that, that, that when we learn how to live, then we learn how to prioritize things in our lives. Come on, somebody say, keep working on it, Pastor. Keep working. Yeah, that, that's the part I have to work on right there. That's the part I have to work on. I have to work on trying to, I, I, I got ministry prioritized. I got some other things prioritized. But, but my whole life, I'm trying to prioritize because I want to know how to live. And, and, and when you learn how to live, then you learn how to put religion in proper perspective. Then you learn how to put rest in proper perspective. Then you learn how to put, listen, recreation in proper perspective. I got good religion. But sometimes I don't get enough rest. And y'all already know I don't get enough recreation. Because I'm here with y'all all the time. My Lord. So I, I'm still working on it. Yeah. Uh, maybe y'all got it you know, figured out. But, but I, I'm still working on it. I, I'm still trying to get my, my auras lined up. Yeah. A amen. And, and even when I was in the military, you know, Ron, you would take R and R. You know, rest and recreation and go somewhere and enjoy yourself. And even when I was in Vietnam, and guys were going to Thailand and, and other places and, and they were taking their R&R. &R. I was in the field because I didn't want no R&R. Because &R. I didn't know how to live. I'm still learning. Amen. Amen. You ought not get so attached to the battlefield yeah. that you don't know how to take a break. so attached to your work <laughs> that you don't know how to take a break. Look at your neighbor real quick and just tell them to loosen up. Loosen up. Go on and tell them to loosen up. It ain't that serious. Loosen up. That job's going to be all right. Loosen up. <laughs> but I wish I had a meal. That church going to be all right. Loosen up. <laughs> loosen up. <laughs> you know what folks say? If you don't think it'll be all right, I dare you to die. <laughs> Some of us think stuff can't go on without us. Think they can't make it without us. The devil is a liar. Listen, when I'm gone, all I want you to do is to get better. When you gone, all we're going to do is get better. Whether you walk out, however you get, whatever, we are, we are going to get better because we understand the value and the brevity of life and we are not going to stop living because of what happens in our lives. So I'm working on my R's. I'm working on, uh, I got the religion. I think I got good religion. I think I got that down, but, but, but uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to tell y'all this. Uh, so disregard what you're about to hear. I'm just going to say this to the preachers, uh, just to the preacher. I ain't talking to y'all. Don't, you know, so don't be eavesdropping on, my, on us. Uh, don't, don't tell them, but sometimes y'all can have too much religion. <laughs> speaking in King James Version 24 hours a day. Oh, oh well, if thou would. Uh, no, no, no. No, Jesus told his disciples, anybody in the Bible with me, come ye apart and rest a while. You got to get away from the business of life and get away and rest and not just do what they want you to do, not just do what you need to do, but do what you want to do. Amen. 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 That was some good information. And I'm expecting a two-week paid vacation out of it, too. We have to learn how to live and enjoy life. And that's what the Bible tells us. Listen, when you, when you, 
when you are learning, I won't say learn, because it is an ongoing process, but, but as, as you are, well, watch this now, as you are learning how to live, here's what happens. As you are learning how to live, not only do you begin to count the days, I'm, I'm still in the Bible, where, where the psalmist says, says, says teach, us teach us to number yes, sir. our days yes, that we might apply our hearts yes. unto wisdom. Yes. So it's all right to count your days. Yes. But as you are growing and developing and maturing and learning how to live. You not only count the days, but you make the days count. What does it matter how many days you have if you don't make the days count? Amen. What good is it for us to say, well, I'm I'm 72 now, or I'm 16 now, mm. or I'm 12 now, mm. if you've not made your life count for something. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. 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 We celebrate birthdays, don't we? Yes. We celebrate. It, it really doesn't matter. Whatever comes around every year, we celebrate it. Yes. Every year. It don't make no difference. What are you? You know, it's been a year now since I had my dog. <laughs> don't matter. <laughs> you know? <laughs> every, every year, you know, I, don't, I don't know why we don't do it every month. We don't do it every day. Every week, you know, it's every year we celebrate our anniversary. Yes, sir. It's been another year. Yeah. Happy birthday! It's been another yeah. year. Yeah. We we celebrate, but but what what good is it to celebrate all that time if you've not made some good use Amen. of that time? Uh, what if people? What if people uh, judge your age, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to run out the door as soon as I say this. What, what, what if people judge your age by your accomplishments? My Lord. My Lord. Mercy. My Lord. How, how old did you say you are? You what? I'm glad you told me because I never would have known. You mean to tell me you're 56? Judging by what you've done with your life, I thought you were 12. Jesus. Right. Oh, I'm at the door, God. Oh, my God. Jesus. We are growing. <laughs> God, would you kindly escort me out of here? <laughs> we are growing. Further and further apart, I age from our accomplishments in life. And I don't mean you got to do some grand thing. Just make your days count. Just make them count. We make them count by rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We make them count by serving the Lord and by serving the people of God. We make them count. We make them count by investing in the lives of others. We make them count. We make them count by thanking God every day for the days that he gives us. We're not only counting the days, but we're making the days count. We are taking advantage of every opportunity that God gives us. We are making our days count. I don't want to waste a moment. I don't want to waste a day. I don't want to waste anything because it's too precious. You know, there's something about uh, what is considered rare. You know, that which is considered, go ahead and stand up and so we can, we'll bring it to a close. But when you look at that which is considered rare, rare, that which we call rare, it means a couple of things. It means that one, one thing that it means usually is that it is something that is in high demand. Mm -hmm. And it means that it's something that's in short supply. Mm -hmm. It means that, that it's, it's desirable. And it means that it's in short supply. My God. It, it means that there is something that 
everybody wants, but only a few will actually have. And that's the way life is. Everybody want to live. And life is valuable. And we could call it rare because it is in great demand, but it's in short supply. We're not going to live forever. Amen. I mean, even if you lived 100 years, that's still short. That's a short Amen. life. When you look at it within this, you know, behind the backdrop of the larger scheme of things, that, that's short. And then if we haven't counted our days, if we haven't made our days count, what does it all mean? And we can talk about living all we want to, but if you don't know how to live, <laughs> you wasted some good life. You know what? The, the life you got, that some other folks sitting around wish they had the life you got. The things that you can do, there are people that wish they could do it. The places that you can go, there are people that wish they could do it. They could go. And God has blessed us yes, Lord. with beautiful life. Thank you, Lord. And I don't know about you, but I want to learn how to live. I don't want to be walking around all my life looking like I need a V8. <laughs> Jesus. I want to walk around looking like, oh man, that guy really knows how to live. Amen. He looks like he is extracting all yes. life has to offer out of every day that God gives him to live. Amen. 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 Father, we bless you and we thank you for life. We thank you, God, that Jesus Christ died for us. And he told us in his word that I am come that you might have life and have it more oh, yes. abundantly. Yes. Teach us, Lord God, how to live. Yes. Teach us, the Heavenly Father, how to balance our lives yes. that we might continue to glorify you. Yes. And God, we pray that if there's one in our midst today who's out of the ark of safety, that there's no, no real life without salvation. Yes. God, there's no real life uh, except the life that we enjoy after this life. So, God, we pray that if there's anyone who's out of the ark of safety, that you would speak, that you would touch, that they might come before it's everlasting too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The doors of a church open. The invitation is to you. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor. Heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in the heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. If there's one today, Scripture tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Grateful, grateful, yes. Oh, thank we thank God, God that there's a gift grateful, of Jesus Christ. Grateful, grateful. Oh, we can enjoy life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah.